the most unexpected event came to pass. The White Tower shattered and the Aes Sedai split its allegiances into two factions. On Tarvalon, Elaira commands 294 Aes Sedai, a Summerlin seat, while more than 300 sisters fled and established themselves in the town of Saladar, where they recently raised Egwene Alvir as their Amerlin in exile. Both factions seek to have the dragon reborn under their control as a means to assert their claim of being the true White Tower. Also to keep at bay, or even destroy, Randall Thor's newly created Black Tower with its dangerous male Tanner soldiers, the Ashaman, that are being trained by the no less dangerous Masrim Taim, the only false dragon ever to escape the Aes Sedai, now Rand's second in command. To that end, both sides sent embassies to the Dragon Reborn, seeking his cooperation. But Rand, following Moraine's advice, rebuffs them both. Thus, Elaira's embassy, led by Galena Kasban, a Red Aja member, activate their secret plan. They meet again with Rand, hiding sisters among the servants, so that he's unaware that there are 13 Aes Sedai in front of him, enough to shield and kidnap him. They stuff him inside a chest, and the full party leaves Kyrian to take their prize to Elaira in Tarvalon. In total, 39 Aes Sedai, escorted by the Amerlin's personal guards, called the Younglings, 582 men led by Gawain Trakand. Previously, they had brokered an alliance with the Shido, the Aeil clan that retreated to the mountains north of Kyrian after being defeated in the battle at the gates of said city. The Shido agreed to escort them to the island city and keep them safe. Three days after their departure, Perun Ibarra, Rand's friend, finally realizes the Dragon Reborn had been taken and assembles a rescue party. He manages to gather 5,000 Aeil warriors and 1,000 Maidens of the Spear under Clan Chief Ruork, 94 Wise Ones under Cerulea, 500 Kyrenian Riders under Lord the Brain, and 200 Winged Guards of Mayen plus Loyal. They rush, healing Galina's party along the Tarvalon Road. Three days into it, Perrin spots another host following Rand, parallel to his own. He meets them and finds out they are the nine Salidar Aes Sedai, accompanied by 302 rivers mounted bowmen, who become overjoyed to find their lord there and then. Both groups join behind Perrin and resume the hunt for Rand. Meanwhile, many miles ahead, a youngling scout rides searching the ground and is hit by a shadow arrow five miles to the north of the party. It is then revealed that Savannah, widow to Kuladin, and now leader of the Shido, plans to betray the Aes Sedai all along, to capture Rand, obtaining power for herself through marrying the Kalakarn. The scout rides back to give the alarm, dropping dead in front of Gawain, who immediately deploys the defensive position at Dumai's Wells, a small tree copse to his right, holding three water wells. They set the wagons in a circle, with Gawain's younglings as the first defensive line, and the Aes Sedai behind. Concurrently, Savannah orders the full-scale attack on the Aes Sedai, with a whole force of 40,000 spearmen, utterly ignoring the counsel of the minor chiefs to keep a small reserve behind. The Shido swiftly covers the distance and begins surrounding the wagon circle, trying to push inside. Savannah divides the Shido Wise Ones in two, sending half of her nearly 300 channeling women to the west, herself leading the other half to the east. After some initial reluctance, the Wise Ones start channeling against the Aes Sedai. Thus begins an exchange of fireballs and lightning bolts, one of which strikes just beside Savannah, knocking her to the ground and killing some of her Wise Ones. At this precise point, Perrin arrives to the site, and climbing a ridge overlooking the zone, stares in horror at the thousands of Shido overwhelming the Aes Sedai circle. Left with no choice, he relies on his wolf brother abilities, calling for the help of nearly a thousand wolves from the surrounding area that attack the Aeol spearmen and wise ones from behind, startling them. Immediately after, he gives the signal, launching the attack. The first to move are the two rivers men, and the minor guards, in two columns, 
surrounding the ridge where Aes Sedai and Wise Ones begin channeling at the shadow. The Chironian cavalry, led by Dobrain, then charges at the center, flanked by the miners and the two rivers men, which dismount and string their bows, firing at the shadow. At the same time, at the very center of the defensive circle, six Aes Sedai are holding Rand captive, shielding him with one power. However, as the most heated moment of the battle comes, three of them are forced to tie their weavings so they could assist in the defense, thus allowing Rand to reach for Saijin and escape with a loud boom. Stealing in the act, the three Aes Sedai still holding the shield. He begins shielding the Aes Sedai and knocking them out. With them incapacitated, the Shairo can't focus on Perrin's army, and just when they were about to overwhelm them, many gateways are suddenly opened, and Masrim Taim comes forth with 200 Ashaman from the Black Tower, clearing a path through the Shido to the center of the Wagon Circle, where they build a wall of air with one power, keeping the Ail outside. But the majority of Perrin's forces were also left stranded outside, trapped amidst the mass of enemies, so Perrin, who was also able to cut his way to Rand, begs him to lift the dome to let them in. Rand, filled with rage, accepts to lift the air dome, but asks Masrim Taim to order the Ashaman to attack, releasing their full strength. Taim complies, and after forming them in line, he commands the most dreaded order. Ashaman, kill! The sheer force of the attack, channeled by the Ashaman, is astonishing, making the Shido warriors explode by the thousands, like in a meat grinder, while making the earth erupt beneath their feet. Those few who are able to flee do so as fast as they can, their leader Sivana among them, effectively ending the battle for good. A few miles to the north, Gawain is able to regroup the 200 younglings remaining, but he swiftly has to face a band of a hundred Shido on the run which he defeats, but at the high cost of losing most of his men, who become decimated to no more than a few dozens. After rescuing twelve of the Aes Sedai that managed to escape the battlefield, he retreats to Tarvalon. In the aftermath of the battle, Rand makes the nine solitaire Aes Sedai kneel and swear fealty to him, shaking the world with the realization that, for the first time, the fabled Aes Sedai were humbled. Thus, prophecy was fulfilled, as it was written in the Carython cycle, the prophecies of the dragon. The unstained tower breaks and bends the knee to the forgotten sign. The casualties are as follows, on Tarvalon's side. On Rand's side. On the Shido. I plan to cover more Wheel of Time battles, and I'll carry on with the book summaries, where I also talk about the real world mythologies that inspired Jordan in writing the series. So, if you like this content, please like and subscribe, it helps a lot. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Y quiero dejar un agradecimiento muy especial a los hispanohablantes que ven mis videos. Tengo pensado pronto sacar videos en castellano, así que si pudieran dejar like o suscribirse a mi canal, sería un golazo, como este. El pase para Di María se va para el gol. ¡Di María!